Hey guys, welcome back to Veggie Campus. I thought today would be fun to show you uh, a tour of our kitchen here in our apartment in Taipei, Taiwan, which is a lot smaller than the apartment that we had in Denver, Colorado. Our apartment in Denver, we had a ton of cabinet space, we had a big bar area, a pantry, and now we are really limited in how much space we have in our kitchen. So I thought it'd be interesting to show you how we have organized our kitchen and some of the pros and cons about living in a smaller kitchen so that if you're ever in this situation or you're ever moving overseas or just to understand another point of view in general, this might be helpful for you. So let's get started. Our fridge size has probably been the biggest adjustment. We love to cook and there's just not much storage space. So we have staples on hand, like I always have aquafaba um, from garbanzo beans and we cook with miso every week. I have some sort of leftovers in the fridge like rice uh, that we can keep a couple of containers, but we can't really meal prep too much. I have some sauces when we throw a salad together. Then these were a great score. I found these vegan tortilla uh, wraps from a bakery down the street, which you can never find tortilla wraps in Taipei. Then uh, we have curry and tempeh, curry paste and tempeh that we keep around. I really try to make it to the farmer's market, but if I don't, I have to go to the grocery store and everything is wrapped in plastic, which is really disappointing. But then luckily we have this little side drawer so we can keep some soy milk. Uh, we love hot and spicy stuff. So we have curry paste and sriracha and chili peppers that usually take up most of the room and then sesame paste, which everyone should keep as a staple. Go to the Chinese store in your area. You can make dressings with it and sauces. We use it every single day. So those are just a few of the items we can keep in our fridge. Our freezer is really, really tiny, so we have dumplings for when we're starving and we just need something quick, some flax seeds that we keep ground up, and then more tortillas. And then, I, luckily we have this place across the street, it's a 24-hour market, and it has all kinds of random things. Mostly I use it for storage, so we keep our fruit that we can, that doesn't have to go in the fridge on top of our refrigerator. And then we have these little containers for things like our B12 and ginger and our garlic because we usually have a lot of that on hand. Uh, we keep our tea on our fridge and our oats because we use those the most and then of course we need a space for all of our whiskeys. This little contraption is interesting. It's actually a dryer but we use it for storage because we have no space. But if you want to use it for a dryer you just put your dishes in there after you wash them. It's above the sink and then you can turn it on and turn on the dryer but we have never used that. Then this tiny little cabinet is where we have some other of our staple pantry items like syrup and nutritional yeast. And I bought that little shelf across the street as well so we could use up the space on top a bit more. And then vanilla, we have a bunch of peanut butter, but again, not too much can fit. So I decided to turn this area, which is not supposed to be for food, I don't think, into a shelf anyway. I think the first time Andrew asked me for flour and I opened that area up, he was like shocked to see everything that I had shoved in there. But we keep like flour and our baking powder and baking soda and lentils and beans up there. And this is our lovely view from the kitchen. You can see it doesn't really lend well for taking food photography, so I usually have to stand outside and uh, take my pictures out on the balcony. Then in the kitchen next to our washing machine is our uh, little pantry where we're able to keep our um, bowls and plates. I have a few appliances. I use this immersion blender now as a food processor because it's easy to store. I have my blender. And then uh, this is Andrew's coffee maker now. It's only one cup. He just puts his coffee in that reusable filter, puts it on top, and then it takes, I don't know, like an hour usually for it to make. So we'd like to upgrade to a coffee machine eventually. Then this spice drawer was an awesome addition that has saved so much time for me. I keep all of our like typical spices that we use and cook with a lot and then sauces like rice vinegar and red wine. Um, so that's been a lifesaver to have on the side because I buy a ton of spices since I cook plant-based. 
This is called a tatong, and the Taiwanese live by it. Our realtor told us about it. Like he told us we had to get one when we first moved in. So basically, um, there's a steam basket in it, but you take that out and you put the water and the rice in that basket, and then you put water underneath it and you put the lid on, turn it on, and then it cooks your rice. So that's basically our rice cooker and we do keep it on the steps. Then underneath the stairs is where we have our like root vegetables and canned beans. And then I also bought two extra drawers for all of the spices that I use because I like to keep space for a lot of Italian spices and then we do Indian cooking and I have my cinnamon and I have my flax seeds under there. So that's just another way that you can use up some storage space is just buying a ton of containers and keeping those handy. So that is the end of the tiny kitchen tour. I hope that you learned something new about living in smaller spaces and also learn about taking on new challenges. And although there's always a learning curve in anything that you do, you can overcome it and you'll ultimately learn more about yourself in the process. So a few things that I have learned are uh, to be a more conscious consumer. I really think about what I'm purchasing because I'm forced to, but now it's changed my mindset. Even if I live in a larger space later, I might keep a, a running list of all the items that I use and I even have it in our starter guide on Veggie Campus if you wanna check that out. But keeping that list is gonna help me in the future if I'm in a larger space to not have to fill up everything with items that I'm not even using. And it allows you to just declutter, it saves time, you know what you like, you learn about what you really use and what you enjoy. It also teaches you a lot about uh, waste and how to be less wasteful, more minimalist, and about what other people are, what their lives are like living in a smaller space so that you can be more mindful of that too. So those are things that I have learned. I hope that if life is dictating that you are going to live in a smaller space or if you're choosing to live in a smaller space, uh, maybe some of these tips will help you, but feel free to reach out and ask any questions because uh, you can definitely make it work and it's a ton of fun. It's a great process to go through. So thanks for joining and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.